Hello all, May 22nd, 2012. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's just get right over to Brent crude. Okay, it started out at 108.8, went up, kind of dwindled, came down to here, went up, and then straight down to almost 108, went back up, and went back down, back up, back down, and finished up at 108.8. Doesn't make much sense. But what do I know? And gasoline prices are exactly the same. So let's just head right over to the rest of the video. By the way, there's a bicycle part to this. Aren't you excited? All right, let's start off with the types of oil. First of all, oil doesn't all come in the same, the same type. There are basically four types. Very light, which is the premium oil. That's the very best oil there is. That's out of Texas. Um, then you have light oil, medium oil, heavy fuel oil. Light oils are good for grades one and two fuel oil homes. Um, it's also good for making diesel and marine oil fuels for uh, smaller boats, that sort of thing. Not barges. The premium oil out of Texas. Let's um, talk about what they refine that into. That gets refined into jet fuel, kerosene, gasoline. In other words, it's the very best. It's the oil that we use the most. And unfortunately, it's the oil that's becoming most depleted. Okay, I'm on the road. I want to show you something really cool. He seems to be friendly enough. I'm going to try and get him to go off the road here. Let's go. Come on. Let's go off the road. Oh, that's interesting. Look what it did. Let's see if we can get him off the road. There you go. I guess he, his defense is to curl up in a ball. He doesn't seem to stink. Usually those kind of things really stink. But I didn't want him getting, getting run over. Let's continue on with the ride. Okay, medium, medium oil is what most of the crude oil that's shipped around the world is today. It's the medium oil. And number four is heavy fuel oil. These are grades three, four, five, six for basically marine shipping fuel oils. They're extremely hard to make. These oils are expensive. These oils are very difficult to process, whereas these oils are very easy to process up here, the premium, the Texas. Uh, unfortunately, the light, very light premium oils throughout the world, which there's only two basic places on the planet that have them, as far as I can tell so far, and one of them was Texas. <clears throat> However, we've pumped that pretty much dry, and that's where we got most of our gasolines and kerosene and jet fuel and uh, that sort of important thing. Pretty hard to get jet fuel out of uh, heavy or medium. It just it just doesn't happen. The uh, jet fuel comes out of the very light and light oils, and not much comes out of light oil either. So let's explain why it, it's so important not to run out of the light oils and to um, stay away from these heavy grade oils. All right, let's take a look at the boats in the bay. There are no boats in the bay. We're looking in the same place, just at a different angle. All right, this is extremely simplified. This entire process that I'm about to try and explain to you is a whole college course in itself. So let's just get into the real basics of it. All right, so a batch of oil is going to be made into something. Okay, the first process after getting the oil to the refinery is putting it through the distillation column. Now what this is, processing oil is all about heat. You take a certain type of oil and you bring it up to a temperature of let's say 360 degrees Celsius. So the whole purpose of refining oil is to make it into smaller and smaller molecules. When oil comes in, it's in this big long chain of molecules that's pretty useless for anything that, we, that humans need for. So what we do is we take the oil and we boil it up to its boiling point where just like water it turns to steam, same thing happens to oil. So we bring it up to like 360 degrees and it turns, it's just just before it boils, it's pumped into the distillation column, which then this 
the oil is very, under great pressure in the preheater, as it's called. When it comes out into the column, it, it's the pressure is released and it begins to boil, and the oil splits off in two. Some of it boils off up towards the top in the form of, of a vapor, and the rest of it is a liquid that falls to the bottom. All right, and that's pumped off and and re. It comes back around and does it again. Uh, a lot of these processes are repeated in this chamber over and over. So the fuel comes in, splits off, comes back out, gets preheated, gets put back in. Same thing with up here. The vapors come through these trays and comes up into a condenser. Then it uh, it's stored, pumped off into the refinery and also recycled back in, into the uh, distillation column. So the heavier the fuel oil, the more difficult it is to change the large molecules into small molecules. The smaller the molecules, the more flammable the uh, fuel turns out to be, such, such as jet fuel, kerosene, gasoline. Those are all very small molecules. So after it, it goes through this process, these long chains are broken down more like something like this. All right, the smaller the molecule, the better the fuel. So the more you can break these molecules up, the better the fuel. Where do you think these fuels come from? And what does sulfur have to do with it? Where crude oil come from? Okay, we've talked about West Texas Intermediate, which is the highest quality oil there is. Oil is measured in gravity. West Texas oil is, is a, has a gravity of 39.6 degrees, has a very low sulfur content, and is usually one to two dollars higher in price or per, per barrel. Okay, then we come down to Brent Blend. That's an oil that comes from the North Sea. It has a gravity 38.3. It's still considered a sweet crude. Then we have OPEC Basket, which is a combination of seven different oil fields around the Middle East, uh, South America, and other parts of the world. They blend their oil together and they end up with a very sour oil, which is full of sulfur. Very heavy, thick, and I don't know what the gravity is. I know that crude oil can't be below a 10 on the gravity scale or it's too thick to be considered oil. OPEC basket is a much cheaper oil and is now considered the standard oil that's used in gasoline and refinery. These two oils are too depleted to be counted in the gasoline figure of pricing because most gasoline is now taken from the uh, OPEC basket. There's another group under here called OPEC crude oil, but it's, um, I, I'm not even going to go there. It's more of like a coal type of thing. It's not really an oil. So as I said, there's a lot to this. It's, it's much more complicated than I've made it. This is very simplified, but it gives you a good idea of what's going on with the oil and how it's processed. Right over there at that tower is where we usually blog. I have some rumors. Now these are just rumors, but actually one of them is turning out to be true. One of them that one of the major banks here in the U.S. is going to have a property bubble burst of some sort. It looks like on the commercial end of things. And that bank is Chase. Apparently they're in real trouble. Now that's on the rumor mill. The other rumor came true that HP was going to lay off 50,000. I heard this rumor two days ago. Today it's in the news. HP is going to lay off between 30,000 and 20,000. So we're at the end of the ride. We're several miles from any, any place that has population or any kind of uh, roads or anything. But here I wanted to show you a, a problem we're having here in California. This is coyote bush. Look at the black stuff on it. See how it's killing? It's, it's literally killing the, plant, the plants here. Isn't that a drag? So all the shrubbery and the oak trees and a lot of the... Uh, in fact, they think almost everything's susceptible to this. And it just slowly kills the plant. But the plant gets weakened and uh, you know becomes susceptible because of the air pollution from, yes, oil. <laughs> okay, until next time.